Hey, what's going on guys? In today's video, we're going to be continuing our Lee Chess Rapid Rating Climb series. Currently on 1330 rating points, going to 2000, see how long it takes. And we get E4, E5, and we're going to play the Vienna. What an opening. We get the symmetrical and the copycat variation in which Gotham Chess recommends Queen G4. And the idea is simply that, yo, if you move your bishop away like that, then G7 is hanging. And there's no ideas of D5 to get a discovered attack on the queen with the bishop. Because after G7 falls, the rook is going to hang. Typically, there is a knight on F6. So after queen takes G7, there's rook G8 attacking the queen. And then you could pick up the bishop, but there is no knight on f6 in this variation, so that does not work. g6, I believe the move is queen f3 to fret and mate on f7. And here you just kind of, your argument is the black has weakened their dark squares beyond repair. And he's going to really struggle to defend them, even if the queens get traded. Knight h6 is new. That's new. If we play if we play d3 to attack the knight with the bishop on c1, then our opponent does have knight d4, which attacks our queen. So I think knight e2 is simple. And it does the job. Here, I think d3, but bishop g4 is annoying. So we could just play h3. Maybe it's not necessary, but we also have knight to d5, which would make bishop g4 unplayable because we have a check which will pick up the bishop. Again, exploiting the fact the pawn is on g6 and no longer defending f6. But if we go knight to d5, um, the knight g4 is now playable because our bishop is no longer attacking uh, this square. But we can just go h3 or just castle. Probably just castle. I like knight d5. It can't be a bad move. Especially because f6 is so weak. I'm I'm a fan of it. Again, he can't do the same thing, which is you know the reason we put our knight on e2. And our opponent falls for it. He falls for it. So even though our queen is under attack, we have this fork. Now normally queen would be able to sack herself for the piece because our queen's under attack but our queen is the one defending the knight so if we take back then our queen is no longer under attack by the bishop so here we're just going to go a piece up very early on i don't think he's got anything better than to exchange knights that doesn't do anything we just take it. And our opponent is losing even more material. We might be able to throw this move in. Although there's no need, we can just take. We're up two pieces now. It's often quite a common saying that like in chess, once one mistake is made, another one is bound to follow. So like bishop g4 is a mistake. And then knight to d5 is a mistake. But our opponent just resigns. Um, that was kind of underwhelming. But it shows the power of the Vienna. Like, it's such a good opening. Here, white is marginally better. But knight h6, yeah, just isn't a good move. Knight g to e2 is the best. It's just simple. Here, I think the computer likes our knight d5 move. Okay, that's cool. Bishop g4, yeah. 
here, we win the knight. No nonsense, we take take. That's basically perfect. But we didn't have to do anything complicated in reality. Um, I think we're going to play another game just because that was that was dead quick. Like, that, that game was over in 10 moves. So we can hop into another one, try and get our rating continuing up. And here we may be getting another London. If you haven't watched the previous episode, we faced uh, Jabava London and I got an interesting game from it. Here our opponent's playing fairly typical fashion. In the previous one, before playing e3, our opponent played queen d2, setting up a battery towards j towards h6 to try and trade the dark squared bishops off. Here I'm going to play d5 um, just to get more control over the e4 square. I often like to play knight to d7 and then try and like bolster my knight by getting it into e4 and then bringing my other knight to f6 playing moves like f5 but knight d2 stops that because we're going to lose a knight if we put one there. So we could fianchetto our light squared bishop to reinforce the idea of knight to e4. I don't know why my arrows are being so weird. Yep. Bishop b7. So now we have enough support to put a knight on e4 just before our opponent strikes a v4 himself. He could have stopped me by playing a move like queen to c2, but that wouldn't have been the end of the world. That's an interesting move. It's probably decent. I'd like to play f5, but f3 does kick my knight out annoyingly. Now we could take, and after bishop takes, play f6 and e5. I do like that. I, do, I, I really like that. We can get a really big center. Now, there's a chance our pawns get doubled if he takes the knight. But we can always take on d4. So that's not really a problem. We'll see how he responds, though. Okay, yeah. But yeah, I, I think I like this. F6, E5. It, and also, if he um, exchanges, we've got a lot of pressure on F2. That's not a good move. Because now E5 comes with Temple on the Bishop. Maybe he didn't want to go to G3 because he didn't want me to take him, but I feel like this makes the situation worse, because our moves are just coming with more tempo. If he takes the knight here, if we take back, we're going to really damage our pawn structure, so I probably would have taken the bishop. Here I think we have to take the bishop. I mean, we could take the knight, but the bishop's a far better piece than the knight is. And we have two fianchettoed bishops. We have two big pawns in the center. We could play pawn to e4 attacking the bishop. And if we don't, then white's going to play e4. I don't like that. So I think we should play it instead. Also stops anything from coming to f3, which is nice. Now, if this pawn wasn't on c3, then I would have been fine with e4, because we'd have played d4. But if a pawn on c3, I don't really like the trade there. I don't really want to trade the pawns. Maybe it's still fine. Maybe it's even good. c6 here makes a lot of sense to me. I'm going to play it. The bishop's done its job. On this diagonal. We're going to reroute the bishop in a minute. First, we're going to attack f2. I'm going to see how white responds. 
If he plays rook f1, then we get to play bishop to a6, attacking the rook. And we're going to go up and exchange. If he plays queen e2, we might be able to still play this. Because after queen takes, we take on f2, the king moves, and then we can take the knight. Queen, uh, okay, well, c6 will hang in that variation, which is annoying, but maybe that's, mm, it comes with an attack on the rook, though, once he takes. Our queen will be defending here, but there's going to be moves like rook d1 to win the d4 pawn. That's probably not great. So after queen e2, forget we need to because he's just going to give us the f2 pawn i'm genuinely kind of annoyed by that <laughs> like why why what i i don't understand why would you just give us a pawn and now we're gonna gang up on the g3 pawn with the bishop and the queen queen g4 defends the pawn I don't think there's any other way to defend it. Queen g4. It's a really cool move. Rook f3. Rook f3 might run into queen here. Check though. To pick up the bishop. So bishop c8 looks good. Just attacking the queen. I mean, this pawn is hanging, but we can also play before. I just realized he's also just hanging his bishop this whole time because he just cut off the escape square. Now our bishop's under attack. You know what we could do? We could do this. We could keep it real simple and then win the bishop. Now we're going to be up a pawn. And that's not the best like return, but this is going to be a bit more interesting now <laughs> like yeah, the position before was maybe just a bit over, like White making some very strange decisions. And yeah, I, I'm fully aware this isn't the best way to convert this whatsoever. But Bishop versus Knight upper pawn, this is going to be a bit more of an interesting conversion now. And I do actually have to convert it. It's not like I'm just... It's, it's not going to be easy. I think, though think we can trade all the rooks. Maybe we want to keep one on. Actually. I think I'd rather keep one set of rooks on. Now keeping both on could give white a lot of counterplay. But keeping one on, the reason I just played king to g7 is because we're controlling all the infiltration, infiltration squares of the enemy rook. And now our rook is going to try and get involved on the queen side. I'd like to play a5. Oh my god. a5 and b4. To open up some lines on the queen side. For us to get our rook going on. b3 is a weird move. It's a weird move. I don't really understand that. To be honest, maybe our opponent's a genius, but I kind of doubt it. No offense. Now the C pawn is just quite weak. Um, we can play moves like rook C8 even, just attacking C3. And what, it's kind of difficult for white to defend. Also, if we can get B4, if we can get B4 in. 
and get an exchange here, then our one pawn will be locking both of these pawns in place. So rather than being one pawn up, I mean, we still will be only one pawn up, but we'll kind of be two pawns up. This just hangs a pawn. Because with the exchange, we open up the A file. And the important thing is, white can't infiltrate with the rook. He might be wanting rook to c8 here. Seems logical, but he'd rather just give us another pawn. He's going to get his king in, but it doesn't really matter. Does not really matter, I don't think. He's attacking this. Let me give a check. Now we can't take our bishop away from this square because he's going to fork our king in our rook. So I think we have to give this pawn up. Could play bishop here, attacking the rook. But I don't really like that. I don't think I really like that. So the rook's just going to go to c1. We could play bishop to g4. Four. Yeah, let's play bishop g4. Let's see if he takes. There we go. There we go. And we've tricked him. And we're going to be winning a piece. And crucially, the rook cannot come to b1 to defend the knight. Because this pawn, this pesky pawn, Barry the b pawn, is in the way. So we're going to be picking this knight up. And there's nothing <clears throat> White can do about it. He's got no checks of his rook to move with tempo. He's got nothing useful to attack. He can't even attack the um, B pawn. Because we control D1. <laughs> I mean, I, I couldn't have said that um, at a better moment. Like, perfectly timed. But there we go. There we go. Win. And that's how to convert um, a slightly better endgame. So, I mean, here, we, we, you know, minus 0.3, but we are up a pawn. And this knight, you know, all of its forward movement squares are controlled by my bishop, which is really important. We kind of dominate the knight's movement. So yeah, here, you know, obviously we're completely winning. Here, this is actually... I was worried about this, but... Computer calls me an idiot and says we're good. Yeah, here, I mean, like I say, I know, I know that was a bad move. I was just trying to get an interesting endgame to see how it went. Yeah, I think it was good to exchange one pair of rooks. King g7 is good because the problem is if we start with if we start with a5 here, then rook f6 gets behind our pawns and white's actually better. So it's really important to play king g7. b3, like I said, was strange. We should have gone c8 immediately, but this just gave us a pawn. I was a little bit concerned about. I was a bit concerned about rook c1 here. Computer gives rook f6, king f6, sorry, is the only move so that this doesn't pin the bishop. But then play this after here to attack the pawn. If white defends it, we win this pawn. So it's not simple, but our opponent plays it very strangely. Gives us another pawn. Play a check. And here we set up the trap with bishop g4. Now the computer actually preferred bishop h3 which I didn't like because I didn't see what the point was after rook c1. 
But apparently we just go pawn grabbing. And we use the e-pawn. That's logical. That makes sense, yeah. But yeah, knight b5 just hangs a piece. I kind of just expected our opponent to fall for that quite easily. If I was playing someone my level, you know, after bishop g4, I know they're going to see that trick. But tactics at this level don't get spotted very often, so you might as well go for them. Uh, but yeah, that's the game. We are now up to... What are we up to? You can't see this, actually. It's really horribly cut off for you. We're up to 1384 rating. Things are going to get a bit harder from here out. Um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you stayed till the end, thank you very much. Please drop a like and subscribe. It helps a lot. And I'll see you in the next one.